Hello, my name is Cheryl Meyer, otherwise known as Cheryl M. Health Muse, and I am a health coach. I want to welcome you to my podcast, It Feels Good to Feel Good, Future Proof Your Health. This is a weekly show that will share lifestyle changes that you can make to support your health yourself. Why do I want to share this information with you? Seven years ago, After being a business owner for 20 years, I woke up one morning in horrific pain where every bone and every joint in my body hurt. I went to the doctor, she ran lots of tests, and then she ran some more, and then she ran some more, and finally she called me and announced she was gonna give me steroids, but there was absolutely nothing wrong with me and I should seek therapy. I knew something was wrong, I hurt. So she told me I would be on steroids for the rest of my life, and I refused that I was gonna have a life of pain and pills. So why was I gonna take steroids if there was nothing wrong with me? So I dug in and started researching, and I turned my business over to my staff. I found a functional doctor who confirmed that I had autoimmune disease by making a series of significant lifestyle changes that I could do for myself Five years later, I had returned to relative health. The best part is that I am now 70, and I felt I feel better now than I did when I was 50. I no longer hurt, which is huge. I will always have autoimmune disease, but losing the pain has been amazing. I went back to school at 67 and became a health coach because I want to share everything that I learned with others. And I wrote a book called It Feels Good to Feel Good, learn to eliminate toxins, reduce inflammation, and feel great again, as the manual I wish that I had had when I got sick, and my book has won 13 awards. So whether you want to future-proof your health and grow old with dignity and grace without dementia and chronic pain and disease, which you don't need to get, or whether or not you already have a chronic condition, like autoimmune disease or cancer or heart disease, and you wanna learn about what things you can do to improve your long-term health, or whether you wanna improve the health of your families and raise healthy children, because 53% of our children have a chronic condition, I look forward to sharing all this information with you. I will tell you, it truly does feel good to feel good, so let's get started. I look forward to having you join me here every week And I want to give you hope that if you have chronic pain or chronic disease, you can make changes that will improve your health. And if you don't want to go there, you're going to be fine if you listen to the show and put these things into work. I want to give you information so that you can grow old and have a better tomorrow. So thank you for joining me. Let's get started. Hello, welcome to another edition of It Feels Good to Feel Good, Future Proof Your Health. The last couple of podcasts that I've done have been about the health of our children. Um, And so the last two talked all about how we need to be feeding our kids so that they aren't going to die of standard American diseases because they're eating the standard American diet. And then the last one, which I hope you will also watch, is about how kids have no idea where their food comes from anymore because we've gotten too removed from the farm. But this podcast is not going to be so much about food. It's going to be how we are now dealing with an indoor generation and we need to get our kids outside. It's really critical that we get our kids outside and that they can find all kinds of activities to do with their friends in nature in the great outdoors. We're filming this ahead of when this podcast is actually going to run and today is Earth Day and I just want to say Earth Day needs to be every day and you need to allow your children to have some freedom outdoors and in nature so that they appreciate Mother Earth because they're gonna need to do a lot of work from what they're inheriting from us and if they appreciate it more and they get outside and they see all the benefits of being outdoors and doing outdoor activities, then they will be much better custodians of Mother Earth than we have been up until now. 
So this is now I want to show you. I usually don't do this, but all the material for my children's podcast is coming from my second book, which is Feeling Good, Living Low Toxin in Community and Everyday Life. I have an entire section in this book about raising healthy children in the 21st century. So please go to Amazon and take a look at the book because it has invaluable information in it, both for your health, for the health of your family, and for the health of your children. Okay, let's get started. Our children have actually been coined the indoor generation. 90% of their time is being spent indoors. We need to allow our children just to be and to enjoy exploring the great outdoors, which could happen in city or in country living. It's important. So don't let your kids sit in front of a television screen or in front of a computer screen for all of their hours and don't keep them so freaking busy learning academics that they don't learn to enjoy life and learn their and to enjoy the environment that they're growing up in. A lack of daylight is actually impacting our children's ability to learn. So if you let them get outside, they'll do much better in academics anyway. It's increasing their blood pressure. And this is the big statistic. It's causing depression in 15% of our children. Suicide is the second leading cause of death for children ages 10 to 24. Suicide is the second leading cause of death for college age youth. More teenagers and young adults die from suicide than die from cancer, heart disease, AIDS, birth defects, stroke, pneumonia, influenza, and chronic lung disease combined. Every day in our nation, there are an average of over 3,700 attempts by children to kill themselves. And it's even worse if you added up all the ones who did not succeed. Four out of five teens who attempt suicide have already given clear warning signs. For every completed youth suicide, there are seven to 10 attempts that result in hospitalization. Air is the, okay, now, this is all important about suicide because I strongly believe getting kids out into nature will, it's almost impossible to be depressed when you're out in the wonders of nature and when you're seeing the beauty that Mother Earth has and when you're in the woods and in the mountains and rolling in the glass, grass, that's pure joy. So if you get your kids outdoors, then they have a much better chance to be happy and to let all that steam off and to live happy, undepressed lives. So that's one of the reasons you wanna get kids outdoors. Air is more polluted in the house than it is outside. Now, I live in Los Angeles, so that's a big statement. But you want to make sure you get your kids outdoors so that they're breathing outdoor air. It's better for them. Let kids play in the dirt. Let them get dirty. Let them play in the mud. The microbes are good for children that they get from the dirt, and they don't need to be lily clean all the time. Let them go outside and make a mess and then clean them up. All that stuff washes, including them. And then plan fun activities to get your child outdoors and afford them the freedom that they then need to enjoy it. Our children are getting exposed, are not getting exposed enough to the joys of being outdoors and the health benefits that come from being in nature. Because they've been coined the indoor generation, 90% of their time is being spent indoors. A lack of daylight is impacting the children's ability to learn, it's increasing their blood pressure, and as I said earlier, it's causing 15% of them to be depressed. That's way too many, it's not good. To make it worse, because the air in our homes is poor quality and it's more polluted, 
it's five times more polluted than outdoor air. So one of my recommendations for that, because as you know, I wrote another book all about toxins, is buy a good air filter and keep it where your child spends the majority of his time so that the air indoors that he's breathing is also healthy. Because all of this contributes to something called toxic load, and it's when toxic load topples over that the standard American diseases occur. So we don't want our kids to get sick. We want them to grow old and to thrive. And so every single toxin you eliminate from your child's life will help them grow up healthier and happier and mentally happier as well. When kids do get outside these days, everything is scheduled. When I was a kid, I lived next to a great big field, and next to that great big field was a great big woods. And I used to just go off by myself. And I, I was an avid reader from like seven years old on, and I would sit on a log that was in the middle of the forest, and I would read. And I was completely happy just being there with the birds, and maybe a deer would come along. We had beautiful birds where I was a kid in Pennsylvania. and so. Giving kids the freedom just to be and to be alone is also really important and having kids be able to entertain themselves alone is very important. Kids today seem to go from activity to activity, whether it's soccer, baseball, ballet, dance classes, art, or some other activity. We keep them so busy in their off hours and sometimes we're even sending them for extra schoolwork we don't allow them to just be and to explore the great outdoors, which could happen whether it was in a park, in a city, in the mountains close to where I live in Los Angeles, or if they were actually living in the country. They need to be able to go out and explore the great outdoors. You can blame it on our smartphone phones and our increasingly tight schedules, but in the United States, we are spending less and less time every year outside than ever before. So there is now something called nature deficit disorder, and it's a legitimate diagnosis as an average American spends 93% of their lives indoors. So not only are our kids living all their lives indoors, but so are we. Now, we're still in the middle of the COVID epidemic, COVID-19. And one of the things I've recommended is that you get outside. I know we're segregated and, and not in community at the moment, except we're at a social distance, but that doesn't mean you can't go out and walk. And sometimes you should walk just for pure exercise. And sometimes you should go outside and walk and use all your senses. Walk outside, feel the air on your face. Look up and see, are there big fluffy clouds in the sky? What color is the sky today? Go over to the first tree you see and feel it. Are there new flowers growing in your neighborhood or in the park where you walk? What do you hear? Can you hear birds when you're outside? Take a sensory walk so that you don't miss the wonders of nature either. And if you take your kids with you to do that, they will start to do that when they're outside as well, okay? According to one poll, 70% of moms in the United States remember playing outside every day as a child, I do, but only 26% of them say they can say the same thing for their kids. So I want to make you aware that this is important and you need to get your kids outside. And remember, we're all very deficient now in vitamin D. And one of the reasons we're deficient in vitamin D is because we're not outside and we're not getting sunlight. So it's also good for your child's health to be outside in sunlight because that also replenishes his vitamin D, which is a good thing. Other countries are placing a far greater priority on getting their children outdoors. So I want you to start thinking about how you're gonna do it. We're gonna talk about all kinds of ways to do it today. Nature has so many gifts for our children. We need to be encouraging our children to explore these gifts. It could be as simple as letting them play on the equipment in the local park. Let your children play in the dirt, let them get dirty, let them play in the mud. And since I already wrote chapters and did a podcast on some of the wonders of returning to nature and the beauty of forest bathing, 
I want you to go back and watch that podcast about the wonder of trees because you're going to get all kinds of wonderful ideas there too. And we're going to talk about it a little bit at the end of this as a refresher. But I want you to explore what the benefits are for children to be outside. In one article I read in preparation of writing my book, one of the articles talked about raising a wild child in quotations. And it was highly encouraged, within reason, of course. You don't want a child that goes wild and does things that are dangerous for him. But today, our children lead such supervised lives. Let them just go be them. Kids need nature, they need unstructured time, and they need play. It may seem like this is just fun, but we know from research this is how they grow and properly develop. Nature has benefits for us all. We slow down in nature. We live in the present moment when we're outdoors. The outdoors takes us back to our roots. It helps all of us understand more about the world around us. And being in nature impacts our mood, lowers our depression, soothes and releases stress. Letting them run wild outside relieves their stress and it improves their self-esteem. All these things are things that need to be learned early in life and go throughout their youth. There are real physiological and psychological benefits of being out in nature. Furthermore, movement will increase brain power, so getting our children out into nature improves their learning. Being able to go out and climb trees and swing and hang upside down and all things that improve motor growth development are important and they also improve learning when the child enters school. So this should start preschool. Find activities so that your child can be outside. As adults, as adults we often do not prioritize ourselves the importance of downtime. And in the long run, that's also not healthy for us. We need downtime and our children need it too. We need to encourage unstructured time for children, which is time for them to rejuvenate and relax, and nature provides that opportunity. Now, let's say you live close to a river or an ocean. It's really important for your kids to be able to go and enjoy that too. So think of all the different kinds of areas that you might be able to take your child to so that they can experience the great outdoors. Because whatever it is, you should experience all of them with your child. You want them to have being outside and in nature a priority in their life. And remember how we talked in the last podcast about children are little pitchers? They're going to copy whatever it is that you do. So it's important that you set an example that being out in nature is important and creates happiness and peace for you. Another advantage of a child getting out into nature with other children is that they get to figure things out for themselves. It encourages them to become problem solvers. They do not, they may not do it right, but that's okay when they're young because then the risks are low. As we know, as adults, making mistakes is part of the process of finding success. I actually don't believe in failure. I believe that everything we don't accomplish on the first try is just another opportunity to find how to get over that wall in a different direction, and your children need to learn that too. Learning tenacity for problem solving is especially a valuable skill for your children to learn. Kids learn to adjust and approach the problem from different points of view until they finally get over that hurdle. It's invaluable. Kids learn limits when they're outdoors in nature. They're supposed to jump on and off things. They pick up branches and they whack things, especially little boys. I used to laugh when I had a little boy and a little girl come visit me because the little boys were always whacking things with something. And the little girls were always sort of sweetly walking around. Not always. Sometimes the little girls were just like the boys. But they need to do that. That's part of growing up. This is normal behavior. And there are limits that they learn as well. They shouldn't hurt themselves or others while they're whacking things with that branch. And it's only by whacking things with that branch that they learn that and that you get to teach them that. If kids are continuously supervised, they never get to learn these boundaries on their own. 
Kids need to learn self-regulation through trial and error. They will also learn self-confidence that they can handle themselves. You cannot promote confidence without children taking risks. According to Eliza Pressman, PhD, they can learn so much more about being a competent adult by going through the obstacle course of being outdoors and wild play. Small children adapt to nature as well. Being outdoors fosters creativity for small children and also for larger children. They are naturally curious about their world and there are so many wonders for them to explore outdoors. It doesn't have to be complicated even if they just get to sit and play in the dirt. There I am playing in the dirt again can bring moments of complete pleasure. Gathering leaves as a small child can bring a small child joy. Children who play outdoors have stronger bones because they're getting their vitamin D. And as a rape adult, they also sleep better because they were outside. They become physically stronger because of outdoor movement that sends blood to their brains and helps them to learn faster. A child that plays out, outside has their senses awakened to the sight of the birds and the butterflies and the smell of the flowers and the trees and the sounds of water rushing by in that stream close to your backyard or in leaves rustling. Importantly, they get a vital break from their intense indoor, often digitalized existence. Being in nature activates their senses. Your child can see, hear, smell, and touch outdoor environments, and this will increase their entire human experience. Encouraging an older child to leave his electronic screen, computers, games, phones, etc., and get into the great outdoors is going to take a creative approach because they've gotten used to being sedentary behind their screen or in front of a television. But if you do this with them, the child will have a wider perspective and grow more because he has spent time outdoors. So let's explore some ways that you can get kids outside. There's a website called Ranger Rick, run by the National Foundation of Wildlife. They have articles, magazines, and games, all that promote a better understanding of nature for your child. And they have a magazine and a book club, all geared to your child's enjoyment of nature. Ranger Rick has suggestions for the outdoors so that you too can get into nature with your child. The natural world, world is fascinating to your kid. So don't miss the opportunity to spend lo loving time having an experience exploring with your child. And trust me, when your child grows and has his own children, he's going to remember those adventures he went on with you more than a lot of other things he's going to remember about his childhood. One of the things that Ranger Rick encourages is gardening for wildlife. I'm going to discuss gardening, gardening for the child's food later on in this podcast, but let's explore how wonderful it is to grow plants that attract butterflies and bees and that the child can see out his window and out into the garden. My husband's first wife actually gardened for butterflies and it was charming to be out in the flowers that they loved the most. She built a little walkway that was actually quite wide that had flowers and plants that butterflies loved and they found it and they enjoyed it and it was beautiful to spend time there and butterflies are so glorious and remember if we don't have bees and butterflies we don't have food so it's rather important that we create environments where butterflies and bees are happy the american academy of pediatrics and the center for disease control agree one hour of free play and moderate activity daily is a prescription for lasting health for your child. Increasing a child's time in nature and in the outdoors does not have to be a heavy burden for you as a parent. It's a quick stop at a local park on the way home from school. It's fishing for an hour in a close local stream, or it's an impromptu picnic outside on your patio or in your yard. It doesn't have to be a big planned event, but it could be an impromptu event that just gets your kids outside with you. Other things that you can do with your children outdoors. 
connect with other parents in your neighborhood, and set up a treasure hunt. Make a list of things that your child can hunt, hunt for. Make a short, simple list of things for your kids to look for, like a shiny object or something that could hold liquid. The satisfaction of finding objects turns it into a reinforcing activity and it will keep them outside in search of the next item on the list. They'll forget that computer game they were doing for a little while because this starts to become a really fun activity. And they're doing it with other kids in the neighborhood. And they should be running around with other kids in the neighborhood. Buy your children books with pictures and send them outdoors to identify things. When I was a kid, I had a tree finder book that I dearly loved and it, it would show you what the shape of the leaf was so you would go to that shape and then it would tell you the next tip in order till you drilled down and you actually discovered what the tree was that you were looking at. I recently discovered that those books still exist and have actually been published in newer editions. So look for that and go on a tree finding expedition with your child. It's fun. You could do something similar with identifying birds, bugs, leaves, trees, and flowers from your local area. Buy audible tapes of bird calls and then get outside and have them identify the bird. We have a bird outside our bedroom at the moment that night that I think is a mockingbird because he's got a whole bunch of different calls he goes through when I'm trying to get to sleep at night and he only does each one maybe three times and then he changes his song. I don't know what kind of bird he is. I should try to figure it out because he's got quite the repertoire of beautiful songs that he's singing to me at night. All of these adventures of identifying things that are in nature are treasure hunts. And so I know that when I was a kid, identifying something was terribly exciting. Buy them a special box to keep their outdoor treasures in. Buy them a magnifying glass. Get them a microscope so that they can look at these things that they've collected under um, high magnification. Buy a simple telescope and go outside at night with your child and look at the stars. Our second home is in Sedona, so we actually bought a pretty sophisticated telescope. And the stars there are sensational. So wherever you are in Los Angeles, some nights because of the city lights, it's hard to see the stars. But you do go places where you could set up the telescope. And one of my favorite memories was getting outside with my father and his telescope and finding what I knew at the time to be the Seven Sisters. To this day, when I go outside at night, I always find the Seven Sisters, which happen to be the Pleiades. And I didn't know that as a kid, but those are very special stars for me because it was a very ex special experience that I went and identified those with my father with his telescope. You could even just look at the craters on the moon. That's a thrill with your child. Buy your child a small shovel so that he can dig in the dirt. Buy them gloves and a garden trowel. Let them play in the dirt and even better, let them make a mess. It's all pure delight for your child. Take your child to local parks, especially if they have outdoor performances, plays, music, puppet shows. They're all magical for a child. I know in Los Angeles, there's actually a puppet, music, uh, puppet theater that you can take your child to, but check out Google. Google has got all kinds of great information. Find things that you can do with your child that will get him away from his computer. Start a collection with your child. It could be fall leaves, it could be rocks, it could be shells. Make sure you're in a public park where you can actually are allowed to take things that you're gathering. And these things are great things to put into your treasure box. So call your city and see if you find a pretty rock. Are you allowed to pick it up? Here in my town of Monrovia, they're actually painting rocks and leaving them all over town for people to find to bring them a little touch of joy. And it's been on our local Los Angeles news stations and it's been written up in the Washington uh, Post. 
that these rocks are bringing joy to people and they're ending up all over the country. And they're just rocks that people have found that they're painting. But that I will admit they're pretty good artists painting these rocks, but they're darling. So start that with your kids. Start collecting rocks with the other kids in the neighborhood and then have painting projects and then have them go back and leave them places where people can find them and where people are allowed to pick them up and take them home. If your child is hooked on his electronics and, elect uh, and reluctant to get outdoors, then buy him an inexpensive camera and teach him to take photographs or let them record videos on your phone. This way, your child creates a photo or video log of all of the adventures he's going on with you, and he'll have that way into his life. Take your child on a hike somewhere in your local area. It could be in a woods, it could be along a riverbank, it could be along a stream, it could be on a trail that leads to a waterfall. Monrovia is right up against the base of the San Gabriel Mountains, and there is a trail that leads up, it's a pretty easy hike, to a beautiful waterfall that has a pond underneath it. What a great adventure to go with your child. I don't know your area, but most likely there is something in your area that you could go on an adventure with your child that would get them outdoors. Check out my emergency pack of food that I try to always carry with me so that I always have healthy snacks. You are not going to want to get outdoors and then drive through takeout food, which is lousy and part of the standard American diet and loaded with chemicals. You're going to want to have your own beef jerky and apple and packet of almond butter um, to be it, and nuts wonderful nuts to serve your child when you get hungry so that you're always prepared and you have emergency food with you. There are lots of things. There are even protein bars that are low in sugar and high in protein that will give you both a little treat when you're out there in the middle of nowhere because you've taken your emergency pack with you. Carry a book with you to read to your child when you slow down and sit. Go on an adventure just to pick flowers and leaves and then allow your child to press them when you both return home. Now, I wouldn't go picking the neighbor's flowers without them knowing and giving you permission to do that. But if you're in the woods and you see some wildflowers, you can pick them. You can take them home and you can press them. Build something with them. It could be something as simple as a hummingbird feeder and have your child make the hummingbird fluid and put it in there and then sit with them and enjoy the hummingbirds that come. Um, even in Los Angeles, we get glorious hummingbirds. And in Sedona, Sedona is one of the capitals for hummingbirds. They have, I don't know how many different kinds of hummingbirds there, but we did buy at the end of the season last year, a very artistic, beautiful hummingbird feeder. And I'm looking back, uh, forward to going back to Sedona this summer so that we can fill it up and I can enjoy watching all the hummingbirds come right out of my kitchen window. Create a fire in a fire pit and cook your food on it and then have a picnic. That is something easy that you can do if you live close to a beach. So think of all the different things that are in your neighborhood that you can do with your child. Walk the dog together. That's an easy thing to do. It's important to get outside and enjoy it together or send them off with their friends to enjoy the great outdoors. Form an outdoor club with your friends, neighbors, and family, and then plan an outdoor activity once a month. Put it on your calendar so that it happens every month. Depending upon where you're going and what you're doing, buy books ahead of time and explore what kinds of activities are available and what kinds of animals might be seen so that the child is actually going on a treasure hunt looking for specific animals and wonders of nature. Do this in preparation with your neighbors and the other people in the club so that everybody gets to add in things that they would like to find and do. But all together, it's a fun excursion and it's an adventure that the neighborhood takes together. Getting teens outdoors with you is likely going to be a little bit more of a challenge because kids don't always like to keep doing things with their parents when they grow older. So you need to limit the amount of time that teenagers have in front of a screen, whether it's the television or the computer screen, and then get them outdoors even if it's just with other kids.
to enjoy outdoor activities. No doubt spending more time reading and doing homework increases achievement in school, but time spent in the outdoors increases social conditioning, which is also very important for the child. Now this is a whole list of activities that you might be able to get your older, your older child outdoors to do. Number one is kite flying. I was never good at getting the kite up in the air, but if my dad got the kite up in the air, it was a real thrill to be flying the kite. Biking. Your child, if you can afford it, or if you can't, buy a used bike. But get your child and take him on a cycling excursion. Include his buddies. The exercise is good for all of you. Hiking. We already know that your child and his buddies would love to go hiking. It could be a daytime excursion or it could be overnight, depending upon where you live. Hiking into a wilderness area and enjoying it all, all it has to offer is important about getting your child excited about living an outdoor life. Choose your area and read up on it before you go and then hike in and fish or learn all about the ecological things in the area. The more you know, the more you could make it very interesting for your child and his friends. Stargazing, again, you can do that in your backyard or you can take your telescope to a park and enjoy stargazing. Take a river trip. That's something that you would actually Google and find and then go to where the river trip begins and it, that will be supervised, but that'll be fun. I used to go on rafting trips as a child down California rivers. It's a hoot. Go outside and play dodgeball. Now, I never played dodgeball as a kid, but if you have never seen people play dodgeball, rent the movie because it's a riot. And you want to get outside and you want kids to have a ball, literally a wonderful time. Don't forget, you need the appropriate equipment and the right type of ball. Buy a Frisbee. Once you have a Frisbee, head for the park with your child. This is fun to do with your child or with a group of your child's friends. Now, something that was very popular when I was a child, way back at the beginning of time, was we got hula hoops. They were actually created and came out when I was a kid. And we used to have hula hoop contests. It's incredibly great uh, exercise for your child. So get them outside. If you have two children, you can have contests of who can go the longest, and it's a hoot. So have it be an experience they'll remember. Go outside and walk. We've already talked about that. Just, it's important that you sit with your child and you have the conversation because I want you to find the right activities that are outdoors for your child. Final thoughts. It's always good to explain to your child why it's so good for them to spend time outdoors, whether it's in the backyard or on an extended trip. I know I always enjoy things when I understand the why and children do as well. There are so many benefits to getting outside off your duff and heading outdoors. So let's talk about those. Being outdoors clears your head and, and also clears your soul. Going outdoors allows you to soak in the vitamin D2, which we've talked about. Grabbing a little bit of nature in the outdoors, you can do. It can be in the wild, it can be in a park, it can be a walk in your neighborhood, it can be relaxing in your backyard. It can be as simple as having your child look out the window on a beautiful day and watch the squirrels. I have two darling squirrels that romp in my backyard. I get a big kick out of watching them play. Your child should too. All of these will reduce your stress and give you an important mental break. Take a ball to the park if you have a dog and play fetch. Let the dog run and get the ball and bring it back to you. You can leave any anxiety or worry at the door by leaving your routine. Spend time healing by experiencing things outdoors. Empty your mind by returning to nature, which is when I am my most creative. If you get outside and just let the wind blow through your head, you'll have all kinds of creative ideas and so will your child. We need to feel the joy of the sun on our skin it warms us and it brings us happiness. And in the winter, in areas of the country where it gets dark in the winter, there's something called seasonal affective disorder. So on sunny days, it's especially important that you get your children outside and rev um, reveling in the glory of sunlight. 
Numerous studies have been conducted to establish the benefits of spending time in nature. It improves attention spans, both long and short term. It increases levels of serotonin, which is your feel-good neurotransmitter, and serotonin is made both in your gut and in your brain. It gives you increased brain activity in those areas responsible for empathy and emotional stability. It gives you increased energy levels just by spending 20 minutes outdoors a day. You need to get outside and practice grounding. That means you need to take your shoes off and put your bare feet into the grass. But make sure it's grass that hasn't been sprayed with Roundup because that herbicide is toxic and goes right through the skin. Draw the electrical charges from the earth into your body and let them flow through you. I am lucky because in Sedona we actually have both male and female vortexes and I love and I love to go experience them. And when you're in an area where there's a female vortex, which means it goes counterclockwise, you release the past. And when you're in a male vortex, which goes clockwise, you're pulling in and manifesting what you want in your future. So those are fun things to go outside and do with your child as well. I want to talk just for a minute about the importance of grounding. Don't worry about the fact that they don't have their shoes on. Just like go let them play in the dirt. And I stopped my gardener from spraying Roundup on my lawn because for God's sakes, we're getting poisoned over weeds. Number one, the dandelions are really good for the bees. And right now I want to do whatever I can so that the bees survive. But remember, they're weeds. We are spraying toxins around us. And our gardeners are spraying toxins for weeds. So let's get things into perspective. If you don't spray your lawn, you can go put your bare feet in them and not get poisoned. You're just simply happier when you're outdoors. Being in the sun and being in the green and seeing all the wonders of the earth naturally makes you happier. I certainly, if I get depressed, that's the first place I head. I head outdoors because I can't possibly stay depressed when I'm outside. True health comes from doing the things that encourage our well-being. Getting outdoors is certainly one of the important things that we can do for ourselves. Being outdoors allows you to work on your spiritual health. I don't care what you believe in. If you believe in anything that's universal, get outside and develop your spirituality. Open your senses to the wonders of our world and practice gratitude that we have all those wonders to enjoy. Bathe in whatever the greater power is that you believe in. Mother Nature's love for us is unconditional. When we need shelter from the heat, we can retreat to the shade of beautiful trees. When we need warmth, we can bask in the sun. When we need darkness so that we can sleep, the sun retreats and creates nightfall. Nature is a miracle and it's complex and loving and sometimes challenging, but she does regenerate. So by getting your child outdoors, he will have a much greater appreciation for Mother Earth and he will treat her with more respect. I once commented to my husband that as humans, we are killing the Earth. And he replied that the Earth would survive, but we might not survive as a species on this Earth. We need to protect it and do what we can to save ourselves. Today, since it is actually Earth Day, even though this podcast will be playing sometime in the future, I actually quoted Chief Seattle, who talks about the fact that Mother Earth doesn't need us to heal her. She can heal herself. The problem is we don't recognize that she can also heal us, which is why it's so important that we stop making her sick. Eat in a way that connects you to nature real food heals. So eat foods from a farm as close to you as possible so that you get maximum nutrition from the plant, eat in season, and enjoy all the colors of the rainbow. We already talked about gardening in the last one, so now I want to talk about forest bathing. Forest bathing comes to us from Japan, where studies have been conducted about the benefits of going deep into the forest. Forest bathing, or spending time in nature, 
has become a cornerstone of preventative health care and healing in Japan. And I think we need to take a look at it and adopt it here as well. Forest baiting is part of the Tao philosophy and other Eastern approaches to health, which means it's an ancient philosophy and it's very wise. There are many health benefits to forest bathing, both physiological and physical. Research shows us that forest bathing positively creates calming neuropsychological effects through changes in the nervous system, reducing the stress hormone cortisol and boosting the immune system. Since I have autoimmune disease, I have a hard time sometimes keeping my cortisol at the proper level. So I'm really looking forward to going to Sedona this summer and I'm gonna take the entire month of July off just to replenish my soul, to get outside into nature and to replenish my cortisol. Listen to your body and follow what it's telling you it needs. I know my body needs some downtime, so I'm going to give it to it very soon. Trees shower themselves in antimicrobial, antifungal, antibacterial compounds called um, photon sides, explains Ben Page, the founder of the Shinrin Yoku LA. This is how trees actually combat disease. But when people breathe in these chemicals, our bodies respond by increasing the number and activity of a type of white blood cell called natural killer cells, or NK. These work to thwart cancer. So the trees are emitting these chemicals because they're good for them. And if you listen to my The Wonder of Trees podcast, you'll know that mother trees let them out and emit these chemicals to protect her children all around her. And she communicates to them through the fungi at the tips of her roots. So, but it's also letting go of these little NK cells that are thwarting cancer in our bodies. So find a woods, get deep, get quiet, go in, sit down and just spend time there. Smell the forest. All kinds of herbs grow in forests and they smell heavenly. So go and enjoy all the gifts that the forest has to give us. One day in the forest will enhance our natural killer cells for up to seven days. In two or three days, the effects can last for 30 days. Chemicals called terpenes are released by some plants. Terpenes come from leaves, pine needles, tree trunks, thick bark, and are also released from bushes, herbs, shrubs, mushrooms, mosses, and ferns. And they enter our body both through our skin and through our lungs. They too are anti-inflammatory, anti-tumorogenic, and neuroprotective, and they are also anti-cancer chemicals. So if you have had a problem with cancer and you're in remission, get into the forest and just go enjoy nature's gift to heal your body and breathe in the smells of, of the forest. Other benefits of forest bathing include, they boost your immune system, it reduces your blood pressure, it reduces your stress, it improves your mood, it reduces your anger, it reduces your anxiety, it fights cancer cells, it increases your ability to focus even in children with ADHD, it gives you accelerated recovery from surgery or illness, it increases your energy level, it improves your sleep, it gives you deeper and clearer intuition, it increases the flow of energy all around your body, your um, astral force. It increases your capability to communicate with the land and with the species that are on the land, and it gives you a greater appreciation for them. It increases the flow of eros, which is your life force. It deepens friendships of people that you go into nature with. But you don't have to be talking, and for goodness sakes, leave your electronics at home. Get into nature without the electronics, and you don't have to talk to your friends the entire time you're there. Actually declare moments of silence so that you do experience some alone time in nature. It increases your happiness, it improves your mood, 
in a, an excellent antidote for depression, as I commented at the beginning of me talking. It reduces your cortisol, which is your stress hormone. It protects against type 2 diabetes. It improves your self-esteem and confidence. It increases your passion for life. And it improves your connection with nature and with Mother Earth. There's a couple more that I want to point out themselves. Better sleep. I'm going to do an entire podcast on sleeping. There was a study that came out last year at UC Berkeley that concluded that seven hours of quality continuous sleep is as important for your health as eating and eating all the rainbow and eating all those fresh fruits and vegetables and cooking your meals. Sleep is as important as that. It's also as important as keeping your stress reduced so that it's not causing havoc on every organ in your body. And then the fourth pillar of good health is learning how to breathe and breathe deeply. We've become a society that breathes very shallow and I stop twice a day and do the Dr. Andrew Weil 478 breathing exercise. Look it up on YouTube, do it with him until it comes naturally, but it actually does reset the parasympathetic nervous system and take the top off your stress so that it's not toxic stress, it's just everyday stress and it's not doing your body the harm. Being outdoors away from artificial lights also helps synchronize your biology to natural circadian rhythms. Research shows that 21 different varieties of trees actually breathe and have their own circadian rhythm. And what they've determined is that trees relax when they're not in sun. So they actually do sleep. And then they, when they take in the water and the sun comes out and their branches rise again, that's part of their circadian rhythm. There's stress reduction just from being out of doors, which is a key element of leaky gut, so it will help your child's health that you've gotten them outside, and it reduces your blood pressure. So all the way around, it's really good. Now, when I listen to people talk about depression, and sometimes it is a chemical imbalance, and I'm not saying that it's not, sometimes you need to work with a therapist so that you can find out what the root cause of your depression is, Sometimes it is a chemical imbalance, at which point you would want to work with a psychiatrist. But sometimes you just need to eat the right food and increase your serotonin, your GABA, and your dopamine. Because if you're eating a lot of processed and fast food, all of those feel-good hormones are turned off in your brain. And all of those chemicals in that food are causing you to be low and to have low mood and to be depressed. So if I'm at all blue, I have a conversation with myself every morning in the mirror. You've heard me talk about that. I ask myself every morning, how do you feel today? And then I get quiet and I go deep and I let my body answer because I've discovered my body is unbelievably smart. So if my body says, hey, I'm a little low today, then I go eat more fruits and vegetables, especially green ones, because I know the next day I'm going to be right back to my healthy self and I'm going to be living my life of joy again. So what you eat and what you feed your children also helps determine their mood. Make going into nature a half an hour at least a priority every week. It will clear their busy mind. It will leave both of your it will leave your goals and expectations behind you as you step on your path for your walk i already told you you're not taking your electronics with you so they're not there and they're of no good so that you can actually bathe and enjoy your experience you're going to get outside and you're going to breathe and i want you to breathe deep a second exercise i use constantly is called the perfect breath which is 5.5 seconds in and 5.5 seconds out. And you do that for three minutes and you'll feel your entire body relax. It's a wonderful breathing exercise. So when you get outside, it's not five, 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 five fast. It's a slow one, two, three, four, five in. One, two, three, four, five out. 
It's the 5.5 perfect breath. And do that when you're outdoors so that you breathe in all the beautiful fragrances that the forest is offering you or that the outdoors is offering you. Right now I'm even getting them from all the incredible flowers in my neighborhood, many of which are from the lemon trees that are all in bloom at the moment. But don't miss any of it because nature is marvelous and you want to get outside and you want to feel it, see it, and touch it. Be present in the experience. We're so busy all the time. Things are flitting past us so quick we're not even stopping to think about them. So make sure that you ground yourself in your present and that you're not missing any of it. Practice a sound bathing exercise or your attention is 100% on the sounds in the area that you're in, whether it's a walk in your neighborhood, a forest, or an urban park. Let the sounds flow over and through you. And use all your senses as you, quote unquote, forest bathe. Hear the sounds, smell the natural scents, see the beauty, touch the textures, feel the feeling of hot and cold on your skin, the coolness of the air, the warmth of the sun, and breathe in that glorious clean air. And then make sure you enjoy the walk. Stop to enjoy the beauty everywhere you go. Meander, you don't have to walk fast. Smell the roses. If you go with friends, as I commented, agree to be silent at least until the end of your walk. I strongly recommend you hug a tree and when you get quiet, you ask that tree if it has any advice for you. Now I'm going to tell you a silly story about me. I was out at Mago, which is a 150 acre reserve by the Tao Society that we take yoga classes with. And the master who was touring me through the grounds told me to go to a very ancient tree and to hug it. And when I got quiet and it felt like the time was right, I was supposed to ask it, did it have any advice for me? I had just finished writing my second book and I was exhausted. So when I got tired, when I stopped and I hugged the tree and I asked my question, I asked it what I should be doing to get my health back because I had been working around the clock to finish my book. And all of a sudden, the eye opened up, and it looked like the eye of a giant elephant. And then it snapped shut again, and I sort of stood back. And then I went in, and I hugged it again. And then two eyes opened, and they looked like little eyes of little elephants. And the tree laughed at me and said, you know exactly what to do to come back to health. So I suggest you do it. And I wrote a blog about it, and it's on my website, which is CherylMHealthMuse.com. And I recommend you read it, but I also want you to hug a tree and get quiet and listen to what it has to tell you and teach your children to do that. It's not nearly as silly as it sounds, and you might discover it has tremendous wisdom to share with you. Don't stay on the parameter of the forest. The benefits are where the chemicals are dense, which means you have to get where the forest is dense. So get into the forest and relax and bathe in these amazing chemicals. And if it's rained, these chemicals will even be stronger and even have greater benefits. So stop and enjoy the simplicity of little things, the beauty of a leaf, a sensational wildflower, the height of a mother tree in the area, smell the air, enjoy the fragrance, and relax and make it time for you. Feel the dirt beneath your feet and ground to the earth, try a rainbow walk. Now this is fun, where you look for objects that are in red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple, and of course, white and black. Take pictures of examples of each color that you find in the forest with your child. Let your child have the camera and take the pictures. And remember that forest bathing is all about non-doing and the art of being. Take Deep breaths right into the abdomen, extending the air to twice the length of the inhalation, and that sends a message to your body that it can relax and it will allow you to enjoy the experience and the complexity of the world that you're in. Forest bathing can be done as a solo activity, it can be done as a group activity, it can be guided or it can be independent, it can spark creativity, or it can solve problems, it can promote well-being, 
And don't forget, the impact of having live plants in your office and your living space are also benefits from simply being surrounded by plants and enjoying what nature has to offer to us. So that's my whole podcast for today about getting your children outdoors. I would love for you to plan activities on a regular basis to get your children outdoors. Try to do something for an hour every weekend with your child. Your child is going to remember the experiences that he has with you. A lot of parents ask me, how do you get kids not to eat processed food, sugar, and junk? And how do you get them not to eat fast food? Because you nurture experiences with them. And they'll copy and mimic you and the way that you eat. And if you're giving them experiences, that's what they're going to share with their friends. They're going to be little junior veggie ragers, which are characters that I have created and someday want to write a book about, where kids enjoy the experiences that they're having with you and all of the adventures that they're going on. Okay? Thank you for listening to me. Get out there with your kids. And let's change the statistics. There's no reason that 53% of our children need to be sick and dying of standard American diseases. Let's make them glad. Glad to be in green lifestyles. That's the way we want to raise our children. Thank you. Hello, could I see a show of hands if there's anybody out there like me who's tried to lose weight their whole life and not been successful? So you've tried all the different diets available. You've tried Weight Watcher. You've tried Jenny Craig. You've tried all the New York Times bestsellers. And the last time you did it, you started off great, just like all the other times. And you started losing weight. And then all of a sudden, you fell off the horse. And before you know it, you're eating fast food and processed food again with all that sugar. And you don't even know why. And in the end, you've gained more weight than where you started out. So you now are beating yourself up that you just don't have the willpower to win. If that's you, I want to address the elephant in the room because nine years ago I got autoimmune disease and started researching because I didn't want the pain that came with the autoimmune disease and the added benefit was I lost the weight along the way. So let me tell you what happens. Big food doesn't want you to win. They've rigged the system. They've put so many chemicals into fast food and processed food that they light up the brain like a pinball machine. It's the same part of the brain that goes off for cocaine and heroin. And you feel great when you eat that food, but it's not making you feel good. And you're starving your body for nutrition because it's loaded with empty calories. So you're getting fat eating that food and it's not giving your body what you need. And it's turning off all your own feel-good hormones of serotonin and dopamine and even your insulin which keeps your moods even but worse than that there's two little hormones here at the back of your neck called ghrelin and leptin and they don't work and they regulate your appetite because all those chemicals have subdued them so you don't even know when you're full so what did i learn to do instead i'm eating the glad diet loaded with all the phytonutrients that my body needs to be healthy and to thrive and to boost my immune system and to ditch the pain and along the way of eating all this live food I lost 60 pounds without dieting. You see, I was starving my body for nutrition when I was eating the standard American diet. And now that I'm giving my body all those beautiful phytonutrients, it's not holding on to it anymore. So it's just dropping it automatically. So don't eat the standard American diet. I don't want you to get a standard American disease. And I certainly don't want you to die the standard American death. Instead, start eating the GLAD diet because by eating all those beautiful phytonutrients, you will be healthier and you will live long and thrive. Thank you.